Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Tangle Deep. Today we're going to be a wild child, which is something that I have no knowledge about whatsoever. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be very exploratory. We're going to die. What I'm saying is I'm preparing you, we're going to die. It's going to, this is not going to be a winner. Uh, difficulty, very hard. And also I'm not good at the game in the first place, as we've all realized by now. So, uh, tier one passive bonus, chance to learn skills from monsters through observation. Uh, this... I have no idea. I can't comment on this because I don't know how it works yet. It might be very rare. It might be that you only gain access to the skill for, like, a hundred turns after you see it used. You know, we really can't. I can't figure out how good this is yet. Uh, monsters are less likely to be hostile toward you is cool. Monster abilities that buff you last longer. That's awesome. Hop to a nearby monster, then leap away with it to an open space. This may also confuse the monster. Confusion has a 50% success rate in the last two turns. I don't know what Confuse actually means in this game. I, it might be that it just attacks random targets. It might be that it stands there and doesn't do much of anything, just sort of like wanders aimlessly. I guess we'll find out. Uh, this does not take a turn. It, uh, it just lets, it's a toggle that makes our melee attacks do more damage, uh, but we spend stamina each time we attack. 25% of the average of all your elemental resistance is converted to physical. So, it says converted, which makes me think that we lose the elemental resistance. Like, if we had 100 elemental resistance and we got this, it would become 75 elemental resistance and 25 physical. But that seems somewhat unlikely. Uh, we'll have to see. My, my expectation would be that this is just gaining us physical and not losing us elemental, but I don't think that's what this wording suggests. We'll see. And herbs act like half-strength power-ups and are instantly used when touched, but only last for three turns on the ground. Occasionally find restorative herbs when non-trivial enemies are defeated. And this sounds very good to me. Just free health seems very good. Or I guess it's just half-strength power-ups, so it, it's not health. It's going to be um, stamina and, uh, and energy. But still, that seems very good, too. Right, let's do it. My name... Hey, come on now. Come on. You know what my name is. That's not even the right key. There we go. So, we've unlocked some new stuff. Uh, somebody pointed out that Rager is probably a pretty good perk for me, given the way that I uh, that I manage my health. I think that's probably right on. And find more and better loot. It might be a good idea to, be, to take Scavenger for a couple of characters. I don't know exactly how effective it is, but building up, uh, building up our, our supply of cool stuff that we can pass on to other characters might be a good way to go. I think we're a melee character here, though, so it might also, like, toughness might be smart, or... You know what, let's take toughness, because I want to die as slowly as possible. Alright, so we have some pretty good pets saved up. In particular, I'm thinking that fire spirit. An actual fire might be, might be great. Probably don't want to take him out until we have the money for the insurance. But it does not take very long to build up a little bit of cash at the beginning of the game, especially since if we really wanted to, we could just we could just bank. Oh, you know what I should be doing is you can bank money. I should be banking money every so often so that our new characters can start with a little bit of uh, a little bit of cash. All right, the ways of civilization are so foreign. Why do people restrain themselves from the touch's embrace? I prefer the company of monsters. Today I will conquer the place of my birth. I think. I think I'm probably was born in civilization, right? I'm just the same. I'm just the same woman as we always are, aren't I? So, well, whatever. Okay. Uh, crude claws deals extra damage based on HP lost recently. Dual wield bonus on crit gain five percent max HP. Are you kidding? That seems incredible. It must be the case that you don't find claws in the dungeon or something, or. Are Katars claw class weapons, maybe? I didn't realize that they gain you health on crits. That, mm, that seems very good. Okay, so we're going to be a dual wield class. I wonder if this might be a good class to, um, after we pick up a bunch of cool stuff, switch over into uh, Budokka, which is another melee class that I think is very good. Anyway, uh, we, have, we have 250 JP to start with, but... What do we actually want to learn? I mean, I guess we could just pick up both of these. And the other two skills are extremely expensive, so... Yeah, alright. Straddle monster and feral fighting it is. 
Straddle Monster is a name. That's a... That's a heck of a name for a thing. Alright, give me some rumors. Discovered the Carrot Patch to receive a short sword of foraging. Sure, I'll sell that sword probably. The horrific Cave Stalker has 146 JP waiting for me. I'll take it. And... Punch some mold-infested vermin for some XP. Well, if we don't take that, we're just going to have an empty rumor slot, so despite the fact that it's not very good, obviously we're taking it. Is there anything I want to withdraw? We could... pick up something like this? this? I mean, this is okay. We probably want to be a class that benefits more from Guile. This might be a good thing to save for a bandit run, maybe? Uh, I probably don't want to use a two-handed weapon... A greedy circlet of persuasion, of foraging, and agility. Man, this seems like an okay thing to take. Although, no, it's a swiftness thing. We probably want to save that, too. All right, you know what? I think we're not going to take any of our loot into the dungeon. This is stuff we are all... We'll save for characters who it fits a little bit better. I will say this. Well, I guess this is a one-handed weapon. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take this. We have a dual wield bonus. We'll just offhand this massive axe. It has a very, very high base damage. It has terrible accuracy. I guess that's a concern. Dual wielding an accuracy penalty weapon is maybe not fantastic. But it's going to hit so hard when it does hit. We're just uh, we're gambling a little bit, that's all. I don't have any money, what am I doing? Right, let's grab whatever we can grab from the... Yeah, bags of grain, garnet leaf, citrine leaf, nutmeg, juicy apples, banana bunches. Pretty good. That's a pretty good bunch of stuff. Uh, so let's sell her the uh, the leaves. Julia hands us some items, and then we are off. I'm very interested to see in actual play. Hey, look, it's the carrot patch. Cool. I'm very interested to see in actual play what it means... For us to sometimes gain monster abilities. I hope it's frequent. I think an exciting way to build the, to have built this class might be for the monster abilities to be frequently gained but temporary. I guess we'll see. Please take one honor system. Well, I'm a wild child. I have no honor. So that was their first mistake. You're going to see a lot of misses bouncing off of the... Uh, Oh man, the offhand weapon strikes are actually um, specifically noted now, which I really appreciate, because that was not the case previously. In the build I originally played, it was a little hard to tell what was going on from the combat log, especially when you were dual wielding. I like that they've cleaned up the messages a little bit, so it's more obvious what's happening. Okay, so this is just some random guy. I guess we'll uh, step up here. We'll turn on Feral Fighting. Okay, Sturdy Boots, that's fine, I guess. It's better than the empty slot. We are taking a lot of damage already, though. Let's eat some bananas or something. Apples? Bananas. Well, our damage is considerable. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of enemies actually using abilities, unfortunately, so we're not having the chance to learn any abilities. So I need to get my crit chance up. This this claw weapon will do some great things for us if I can just get a decent crit chance. We also obviously need strength. Uh, maybe that... that Plus, Guile equipment would be wise to get. This place is a gold mine. In the last two weeks, I've picked up over a dozen swords, axes, and chest plates scattered in the caves. A little sharpening for the weapons, a little patchwork for the armor, and they're good as new. If I can just keep out of the way of the monsters, I'll be set for life. <laughs> well, good luck with that, buddy. See, it kind of looks like we can just keep Feral fighting on for now. We're killing enemies frequently enough that we're getting enough uh, stamina power-ups to just keep this running. Oh, 
Okay, a pebble pouch is useful. So it gives us the ability to throw a rock. Well, that's not ideal. Hop to a nearby monster, then leap away with it to an open space. Outside the range of the fire. Nope. Okay. Hey, look at that. Briefly increases your fire resistance, and it is not temporary. Oh, man. Okay, so we can only learn skills while we're actually a wild child. This is one of those things that does not follow you out of the class. So I wonder if... I wonder if it might be a good idea to... swap over to something else early so that we're back to wild child when the dungeon starts to get hard. Um, so that we can learn better abilities. I wonder if there's a limit to the number of monster abilities we can know? Sixty percent of weapon power, sixty percent of spirit power. Okay. This is a good versatile ability. Hey, it's that guy. Basic Adventure and Recipes, Part 3. Who doesn't love chocolate? A nice cooked dessert can bring out the best flavors and some great health benefits, too. Find yourself a campfire and try these simple ingredient combinations. Cheese flan is cheese and chocolate or cookies. Mint fudge is any two mints, chocolates, or cookies. Okay. That guy hits uh, fairly hard, actually. <laughs> Why don't we just go ahead and do this? Well, so far I'm excited about where this class is going. If monster abilities generally use energy instead of stamina, then that means we can uh, hold all of our stamina for biting people. Although I do not necessarily think it is a good idea to bite random wildlife that you encounter. So we put on some hide armor right away. We should definitely at least put on the hide armor of constitution, but would I rather have robes of sheltering? More CT gain. No, let's go for the let's go for the flat damage reduction for now. Here in melee, we just we get hit a lot. Yeah, so I assume that over time you learn what the good monster abilities are, and when you do your wild child runs, you try to be wild child at specific floors so that you can encounter the right monsters. And then you just kind of run back and forth waiting for them to do cool abilities at you. <laughs> that fire breath is pretty good. I wonder if we lose all of our monster abilities when we change off a of wild child. Maybe that's how it works. We'll go a little bit more strength, and then we'll start we'll start picking up some guile. Now, these things really don't like it when you get to the bananas before they do. All right, thirty-one JP. I wonder what claw mastery does actually. Also, I'd really love to get a second claw. I'm going to assume Katars are of the claw class, so there probably are relatively frequent claw drops. I feel like we've seen a lot of those. Boy. Accuracy is a real problem. This is what I discovered when I was uh, playing around with dual wield builds a little bit. Uh, back when I was playing this the first time. So you have to be really careful when dual wielding, because it's very easy to just spend all your time missing. Uh, so again, probably not the best idea in the world for us to be wielding an item that has additional accuracy problems on top of its normal dual wield penalties, but also it hits very hard. Okay, look to me like on the map, yeah, there's a little bit of space up here in the upper right that we didn't totally explore. Okay, but there was nothing in any of it. We 
We might actually want to go back to town and pick up new rumors. We also have... We have 836 gold plus a bunch of items. We should, I guess, we should try to make enough money that we can ensure a pet before going back. So we picked this up too. Lightning continues to strike at random afterward. Okay, so that seems good for group combats. Ooh. Nobody likes to eat their fruits and vegetables, but we can make them taste a whole lot better. Find yourself a campfire and try these simple ingredient combinations. So carrot stew is cheese and carrots. We knew fruit cobbler already. These are handy notes, though. Alright, so I'm gonna thunderstorm. Oh, no, it happens right away. See, when the monster does it, it has a turn of wind-up, so I just kind of assumed it would be the same for us. And I figured, oh, I have such a good handle on things. I, there's no way I need to read the tooltips. Ooh. Lucid Orb Emergency. Okay, Emergency is an alright uh, trait to, to, to uh, put on an item. Bestow. Bestow is the word I was looking for there. I'm sure you all heard me, like, st <laughs> stop for a moment mid-sentence and be like, holy crap, what was I about to say? What was the thing that I was going to say? It was bestow, it turns out. Do we have to find his pet again? Okay. Yeah, I got you, man. We got you covered. Up, oh, stand in a fire. ASB, maybe don't stand in that fire. He has 0% HP. Maybe he could just die. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. Jellies combined? How come I didn't learn how to combine with jellies? It's the ultimate power. I have enough job points to learn an ability? Wow. Yeah, we really racked them up there. Okay. I'm gonna hold off. Actually, it might be good to pick up foraging, but I want to go back to uh, town and talk to the weapon master guy and see what claw mastery looks like before we make any big decisions. Okay, we finally got there on that. Just pressing the wrong movement keys. Ooh, a shock ring of muscle. Yeah, I'll take this. I'll take strength over boots. These boots were preventing us from getting stuck in the mud, which, you know, it's not incredible. Jelly Boo is, uh, kind of horrifying. There are things about that that are... I guess the, the worst part is the implication that all of the jellies are that intelligent. Kind of makes the whole thing we're doing here sort of more awful. Okay, great. Some white quality Shining Dazzle Leaf Seeds. Thanks. I mean, listen, I didn't help him for the reward, but I would have liked a nice reward. Okay, we found a Katar. Let's have a look at this thing. I think it's... By the way, it might be Katar... I'm not actually sure how that word is pronounced. So yeah, it turns out claw class weapons are really cool. I just didn't, I didn't look at this closely enough. So I probably want to stick with my shark tooth cleaver. This thing does have higher base damage than my crude claws though. Alright, we really ought to... We really ought to head back, I guess. Now that we've got all of our rumors complete. Yep, I know. Listen, I was coming... I was coming right to you. Claw Mastery. Its mastery is focused on furious close quarters combat, ignoring notions of pain or retreat. Hmm... Berserker Frenzy, powerful boost to melee combat at the cost of temporarily sealing other abilities. Okay, hold on. 
I probably want to pick up foraging before I do that. Because free stuff sounds good. We'll see, we'll see exactly how effective this is. It kind of seems like we might, uh... After picking up foraging here, though, we might want to consider... Switching to another class. Hold on, let's let's bring... What's this? Sparky created a potion from its essence. A mint super brew and a an aquamarine. Wait a minute, mint super brew? How good is that? Wow! That is a very good potion! What? Okay, we gotta capture more high-level monsters, and they're just gonna occasionally give us massive, incredible potions. Uh, please, could you pass me that big fire over there? Okay. Well, th and this might be a good time to... <laughs> to consider switching over to another class to grab some skills before going back to uh, Wild Child. Because, for the moment, we're in no danger. Our pet will be able to handle pretty much anything we encounter, I, I think, so... Uh, show me what you got. You got some chicken dinners. I'll take those. Yep. Yep, that. Okay. We do have to sell some stuff, I suppose. And in fact, we have some other things. Yeah, we don't need this. I think I'm going to put this on over the armor we're wearing now. We don't need this sword, that's for sure. And we'll sell this armor as well. Okay. So, what do we want to do here? We probably want to at least get to 400 JP. Because when you change classes, you lose all your current job points. We should get to 400, take the first level of Claw Mastery, at the very least. I guess the real question is, do I want to grab the other, uh, the other skill here before doing that? Yeah, I kind of think I do. All right, we'll remain a wild child for a little while longer. Three defenses that I don't have to do anything to maintain seem awfully good. This is not the button I want. Here we go. I forgot to get rumors. Okay, we're going back to town. Okay, that was effective. Well done. Yeah, rumors. These are important. Uh, there are some Ruthless Aracudas that'll give you some... Yeah, okay, whatever. I'll probably just sell that sword, but that means that's quite a lot of money from that quest. Uh, Alright, kill another monster on level 5, and also try to kill Electric Jellies with the power of lightning. Is that going to work? Are they vulnerable to that? Well, we'll try it. trying to get adjacent to him. Ah. Our only lightning attack uh, only hits adjacent, so... Ooh. Free stamina herbs. Yeah, so being in melee means that monsters drop power-ups a lot more. It's really easy to maintain your stamina when you're in melee. Also, this might just be because we're still low level, we're still fighting a lot of melee monsters and stuff, but I like that our pet's not taking any damage at all. I would rather take the damage, I think. Oh, hey, look, it's another creepy demon dude. Sorry, <laughs> that's stereotyping, I shouldn't say that. It's another demon dude. Uh, yes, I will drink your strange potion. Say no more, give it here. The last one turned out to be so good. Actually, I probably should have rested first. Uh, you know me. I can't believe I died last time, by the way. I'm so embarrassed. Like, to have died while trying to get down the stairs while I had a bunch of instant healing items in my inventory, it's just very frustrating. We gotta remember, with this character, we have a crazy powerful healing potion in case things get weird. Oh hey, we learned frog bounce. Frog hop. 
Leap to the target instantly. Briefly gives you reactive health regeneration if struck by a strong attack. Man, that seems very good. So yeah, like, being Wild Child really early in the dungeon gives you a bunch of free abilities. I kind of wonder if, um... I wonder if we are going to hold on to these when we when we class change. Because if we do, it seems like going Wild Child at the very beginning of the dungeon, he's off fighting other stuff by himself. I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> Spinebro's weapon element seems ineffective. It's hard to kill a fire with needles. Have you ever tried? That's, that's actually, uh, that's real life right there. Actual fire, you're the greatest. So 30% damage from le all, 30% uh, less damage from all attacks is the potion we got. That's a pretty good one. It's not as good as the massive healing potion we got the first time. But I guess that's how it works, right? You want to give them your best stuff the first time. They keep coming back for more. Pretty soon he's going to have us all hooked on weird demon potions. Coming back, begging for a fix. Having a really hard time hitting this thing. Also, we're actually going to have to turn off Feral Fighting for a minute here. Get him! There you go, that's how you save on health. They can barely even damage him. I was kind of hoping he would go down there and fight that. There we go. Fool! It's worth noting, we are taking some damage just from meleeing them, in addition to the damage we take from them actually shooting stuff at us. Spiny Maze is a real bummer for a melee character. Think of all the job points. And occasionally loot. I'm just gonna chill right here. Okay, good job. We may as well let him tank a little bit of damage so that when we use a healing flask to pick ourselves up, the fact that it's healing him as well is actually accomplishing something. Getting double value out of it. Go ahead. Alright, stamina herbs. So... I feel pretty comfortable switching to another class that has significant costs associated with their abilities. Because it seems like we're going to be able to generate um, stamina, especially, but also energy very quickly between having this ability and just being a melee character. Man, the, uh, the items that we have found in here have not been worth anything. Well, I thought we'd been... Okay, I was going to say I thought we'd been fairly thorough, but no. There's a whole area over here that I haven't explored yet. Box of mints, a flame ring. Assassin Gloves of Treasures. Now that sounds interesting. Plus 15% damage with, you know, melee weapons. And plus 5% magic item chance. Yep, this is... Goodbye, Pebble Pouch. Who needs to throw things when you have a magic fire following you? Man, that seems like... those gloves are very good. What a very extremely good accessory. So where are we at on job points? I want to switch as close to 700 as possible, you know, just to minimize waste. Okay, he, he actually took some damage there. Leaving him to solo a champion is maybe pushing it a little bit. No, I mean, we got the insurance on, you know. Nothing really bad can even happen. Man, I do wish there was a way to get your pets to move out of stuff like this. There's no reason that he should just stand and take that. 
Okay, I learned the... Hmm. It said learned ability. I don't seem to have learned an ability. Maybe I can only have so many? Oh no, here we go. Revenge Claw. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we had a slot in our bar open up because of the fact that uh, we lost Pebble Throw. Well, I apologize for the lack of drama here, but we are really just tearing through these low floors. Okay. Oh yeah, that's good for you. Uh, this might be a good time to, like, consider crit chance. Elemental defense will be... Elemental defense and pet health. Hmm. Since elemental defense gives us some amount of physical defense, discipline does look a little bit better than it otherwise might. We also do need crit chance, though, like... Yeah, let's pick up some crit and parry. Uh, boosts attack and defense by 10% or gives us some stamina and energy back. That's interesting. This, this is actually a choice. Um, given the situation with our power-ups and stuff, I think our stamina and energy might be a little bit better than it is with most characters. So let's go for... Let's go for actually being a better fighter during the period of the uh, flask healing. Okay, bandages. That's cool. Party meat, which I, I guess we're just, we're at the point where they're just giving us all the recipes now. So Onigiri is two fish and one bag of grain. That's a pretty good healing item, if I remember correctly. And cheese grain meat makes the hearty meat witch, which is fine. It's a fine item. We found some balsam. Well, we're definitely still taking... Uh, these. That put us at 717. Pick up Panthox skin, so let's... I should have looked at our elemental resistances before doing that. I have no idea if these are lower than they should be. But hey, we're at 24% physical resist. That's pretty good. So we should probably head back. It's Rando from the ranged gear shop. What do you have? A sure strike ring of muscle. Ooh. Well, we definitely don't want to take off our assassin gloves. So we would be paying 600 gold to trade 15% lightning damage for 5% chance to crit. That's honestly... I don't know if that's worthwhile. And this is pretty good. Yeah, especially with our with our claw, like let's let's do this. So I might just try to bank the sure strike ring, but obviously we're gonna be a little tight on money right at this moment. Or the the uh, shock ring, rather. Yeah, these we're gonna be wearing these for some time, I think. I guess let's uh, let's sell stuff. I said, I think I want to hold that uh, that other ring. I think we want to bank this. This is a good, this is a good bankable item. How much should that be? Oh, it's not even that expensive. Yeah, sure, store that. And I guess this these store cheaply reduces damage from attacks at one third HP. We actually might want to just hold on to this uh, because as a melee character, we might you know, want to put this on one of our well equipment of type offhand. I don't know that weapons... I don't think weapons are of type offhand. I think it, it means, like, this is specifically for a shield or something. Yeah, whatever. We'll bank it. Okay, so if we made a class change right now, we might lose all of our cool monster abilities. I'm not really sure. Let me think here for a second. Because this is another situation, right, where if we, um... If we're going to change and change back, we want to be Wild Child during the difficult part of the dungeon so that we can learn really powerful abilities. And also because this will be most helpful when the monsters are a little too tough for us. So we want to change early, then change back, then pick up Weapon Masteries. It's the same plan as last time. And obviously that makes me a little nervous because I remember what happened last time. I still have the bruises. 
But I think... I think it's right. I think it's right. We're going to change jobs to some other melee class to pick up some stuff. So we can pick up... I, I talked about switching to Boudicca. I'm a little... Hmm. I'm a little unsure. Because a lot of the Boudicca attacks require you to be using your, your bare hands. Anything that says required weapon type, natural weapon. So... We won't be able to use our cool claws. But there are a number of things that we can pick up from Boudicca, like Tornado Stance, which is just a, you, a button you hit, and it gives you, for a while, you uh, you kick the crap out of people when they're near you. And we could pick up all of these marks, these vital points. So every time you attack, uh, you can cause enemies to gain a debuff. And there's a couple of these. This one just makes people take more damage. And then if you hit them with a Boudicca attack while they have this debuff on them, they get confused. Uh, there's this one, which makes people bleed. And you can spread the bleed with Boudicca attacks. There's this one, which makes people blow up if they die while it's on them. It's actually extremely good. Uh, Two-Finger Catch is bananas. But we won't really be able to use most of the active abilities, right? This heals you for your spirit power. Key Wave gives you a ranged attack that scales mostly with weapon power. Yeah, we might actually be able to pick up some pretty good stuff. We just It's just Hundred Fists and Palm Thrust, I guess, that we wouldn't be able to use. Which means that the Vital Point stuff would be of somewhat limited use, although the one that just makes people take extra damage is still great. Ah, that's also pretty good. Causing people to explode. <laughs> if we were... What else could we switch to? We could switch to Brigand. We could pick up a little bit more mobility stuff. Cloak and Dagger lets you swap through an enemy and do a ton of damage to them and bleed them and stuff. Uh, what else? We could do Edge Stain again. Yeah. Songs are okay, right? We had, we had some fun with the songs. But I, I kind of think I'm talking myself into Boudicca. I think there's some good stuff in there. We could also pick up Paladin Powers. Generates a Wrath Charge. Okay, this is they've changed Paladin since I last played. Okay, Divine Fury now works off of Wrath Charges. Shoot lightning at people. It's kind of the Paladin's thing, is always shooting lightning at people. I think we're going Boudicca. Let's temporarily be a Boudicca. So, the deal with our new class. Uh, we want to probably, when, when unarmed, attack with both fi with with your fists. You have you basically have an offhand attack with your bare hands. Um, it's pretty good, but also we have pretty good weapons. I'm not sure what the we'll we'll, we'll conduct a little testing. I'm not sure what the difference is in damage between attacking with good weapons and attacking unarmed. Alright, cinnamon, cilantro, milk, and milk. Good. Good milk trees. Gotta love those milk trees. We have a little bit of money left, so let's... Wow, chicken dinners. Yes, thank you. Okay, we are not short on meat this run. That's good. I'm actually gonna... I wanna buy fish... Now that we have the recipe for making that sushi, eh, I'm gonna spend my money on things that I can whip at enemies. We're a little short on on area attacks. Okay, and we don't lose our monster abilities. All right, so let's step in here. And we'll we'll hit some enemies with our weapons. Okay, that that test was pretty short, but I hit. 67 with my something. I guess that's my main hand, right? Because otherwise it would say offhand weapon. So I'm hitting with my main hand for like 67. We'll, uh, we'll hit a couple more monsters. Let's get a little bit more data. So I saw a 51. Yeah, so 50 to 60 damage. And I guess this also would be reflected on our character sheet somewhere, but good data is, is good data is good. I don't know if you knew that. Things that are good are often good. 
Okay, so in the 50s or 60s. Let's unequip our weapons. And just punch the monsters now and see if that's more effective. It seems like it probably should be, because otherwise what would be the point of the, uh, of the ability? Man. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're hitting for a little bit more. And we're not actually uh, dual wielding, so we're not suffering the dual wielding accuracy penalty. So even if the damage was slightly lower, it would be better to continue this way, but it being higher makes this a total no-brainer. And our pet is a total monster. In a lot of ways. Constantly burning people to death is kind of screwed up. Wow. I punched his face off. His face is gone now. Well, I was going to try to get him with the electric attack. I thought I'd hit him once to just soften him up a little bit, you know? Alright, so some of our some of our rumors are on this floor. We just got to find everything and kill it. We don't have to spend a lot of time considering here. Uh, that's one of them. These Aracudas have not even one roof. Can you believe it? Uh, let's throw out the Revenge Claw, because they'll move right into it. Burning Iron Claymore that's almost certainly just getting sold. Well, this dead end was kind of a bummer. I wish shovels were more common. I keep seeing things like this. There's a spot here where there's a wall, and then there's definitely an open space on the other side. Stupid crab. There we go. Crab paralysis is a serious problem. Okay, well, I'm glad we came in here, I guess. Um, I'm going to need to move out of the way of my pet. I don't know how we're gonna... There we go. Well, he walked forward. I appreciate that. I do need some kind of actual ranged attack. We could shoot Salamander's Breath. I'm sure it won't hurt our pet, and then on top of that, you know... Even if it did do damage to our pet... Uh... Wait, did it? I hit him with the Salamander's Breath. No, okay. I was going to say, even if it did hit our pet as well, he probably wouldn't take any damage from it on account of being an actual fire. Please don't just walk into the trap tiles after the enemy is dead. What's wrong with you? Sometimes I think this fire has no brains at all. Yeah, it seems like being a wild child, briefly at the beginning of the dungeon, just to pick up a bunch of active abilities early, and then switching to something else, is a strategy that we could maybe employ a lot. Like, we got we got an area attack, a charge, and another... Actually, we got several area attacks and a charge for free. Seems awfully good. Well, I think I'm going to abandon this rumor about the, uh, the slimes, because I think we're going to start getting out of the places where electric slimes are common pretty soon. I would like it if you did not. Summon a bunch of magic swords on top of me, please. Take a little bit more guile. I think if we go up to the next floor and then go back to town and get rumors, they might be for the floors above the Duke fight, and that'll give us some guidance on which branch we want to take. I made an unexpected discovery today while rummaging through the debris of a cave-in, a pile of old beat-up armor that looks like it has seen many battles. I spent the better part of the day digging it out, and I gotta say, it don't look anything like the armor they sell back home. And the poor soul inside of it? Nothing but metal and a bunch of other shiny stuff I can't make heads or tails of. I think if I take that stuff out, there'll be enough space for me to squeeze inside. But where did it come from? I think I'll be going back to do more digging tomorrow. Zephyr Arsland. Hmm. 
All right, we are embarking upon some kind of story here. We just picked up enough fish to make sushi. How how is it that the uh, the shop guys are always just like totally chill, hanging out with monsters? Okay, dude has some stuff for us. Summon pet health up. Uh, water damage, energy, spirit, and core stats. This is a really... This is a pretty good caster ring. How much money do I have? I have enough money to... To buy some stuff for the purpose of banking it, I think. We just keep putting stuff into the bank and never taking anything out. Think of all the value we'll accumulate. We'll never use any of it, but think of all the value. Maybe this was unwise to do right before the boss? I don't know. It does get me an ability. So I think we probably want to just take Vital Point Pain. We're almost uh, capped on our passives already. But this is a really nice one. Just every time you hit an enemy, there's a chance that it will take 15% more damage for a while, basically until you kill it. We could take... You know what? I'm going to take Two Finger Catch. We're about to be fighting, you know, the, the normal melee bandits actually do have knife throw abilities. I'm not sure if this will work on the, uh, on the chemists. But it's just a very good ability for not getting murdered at long range. So if we step up to here and then grab rumors, I guess there's no sense going back to town and grabbing rumors before the boss fight is there. No, we should probably just go. So is there anything else I want to do? Is there, are there any preparations I need to make? We have the weapons I think I want to be using. I guess this isn't actually active for us right now, is it? Hmm. Well, I could equip something else in its place. Just remember not to get rid of it. I guess the only thing I really have is this thing. It does give plus four core stats. Yeah, I think that's sensible. We're not dealing any water damage. We don't really need the spirit or anything, but... This has four strength on it. We'll take the top stairs. Alright, this is the part where I don't die embarrassingly to the first boss. We are, of course, going to insult his rug. I think you should always insult people's rug. It's just a generally good way to start a fight. It's just... Hmm. Are they... they're too smart. Okay. Now are we active? No, he's not even coming. Okay, so let's... prep Salamander's Breath and then move forward to fire it. They managed to avoid that very effectively. Okay. Uh, the pet is doing incredible work right now. I really just don't want to be standing in this poison. I'm trying to get them to... They're, they're like maneuvering away from me. That guy's just going to die due to fire damage. Boy, I was going to say, that poison just lasts forever. Yeah, my pet is soloing the encounter right now. Uh, Salamander's Breath. Let's go for... Thunderstorm. Jeez. Step out of the bomb. Oh, Frog Hop actually has a shorter range than I thought it would. Well, I'm gonna move forward and Duke Derpy's gonna explode. Yeah, this pet is... Maybe a little too powerful for the situation that we find ourselves in. I basically didn't participate in that fight in any meaningful way. Chemist's Frost Ring. That's fine, I guess. I think we already have a frost ring. We'll, we'll go back to town and see whether our current ring is better. Because we don't need to bank a ton of rings of the same elemental type. But I do like the idea of having one of each, at least. Alright. Let's head back now and get rumors. Uh, Kill two bog frogs with lightning. Sure. Oh, I gotta drop the old rumor. 
yeah, we're not getting this. Also, the reward for it isn't even good. Give a mad chemist some cookies in Old Amber Station? Sure. Okay. I guess we'll go through Old Amber Station, that's fine. Doing alright on money. Yeah, like this isn't this is a fine ring, I guess. Hmm, do I want to go up to arrow dampening banded mail? I you know, given that we already have two finger catch, I'm a little bit less worried about ranged attacks than I normally am. Maybe that's unwise. I don't think we have anything else that we are desperately in need of selling, but. I will say, we're doing very well on food. We have a lot of meat. What was I doing? I was looking at my job points. That's what I was doing. So how far off are we from the next couple of things we want? We can only actually run one more passive than we currently have. Uh, we can swap abilities if we end up with more than four passives. We can swap things in and out of the four slots. So it's not useless to acquire more. But I'm thinking, like, we pick up a vital point... And the Steel Resolve skill is not bad. You can't be crit. is useful because uh, you sure do sometimes suddenly die to a crit. But I think I'd rather have something that's going to boost our offense a little bit more. It bleeds people for 30% of weapon power as physical per turn. Maybe it's better to pick up Vital Point Bleed? Or Vital Point Explode, you know, um, we don't really have a lot of, rain of uh, area damage right now. Although I guess we're picking up monster abilities to do area damage. Yeah, this is, this is maybe less important than being able to just burn one target down really quickly. I'm not actually sure. It depends on what the chance to bleed is. Because it's not... Yeah, it's not, it's not stated what the chance to apply the vital points is, and if these are different, then that, you know, that affects the scaling. I guess we'll go for vital point bleed. It's going to be a little bit more, um, a little bit less spiky, a little bit more reliable. That's not necessarily a good thing. Sometimes spikiness is useful. Actually, what we should do here is we should try to withdraw, because that's the only way to look at what we have right now. Right now we have a, a Lucky Frost Ring and a Frost Ring of Toxicity. Uh, both of these are worse than the Frost Ring I have on me. But not so much so that I'm going to spend gold on it. Okay, so we're still in Boudicca for a little while longer. I'm going to do a little cooking, I think. Let's do a little cooking. So... What recipes do we know? Actually, I know we know this. We're going to do this here because if I do it from the menu, I can't add seasoning. So nutmeg boosts elemental defenses. This just Seasoning just adds an effect to the food. So boosted crit chance, extra HP regen, yeah. Cinnamon onigiri, why not? That sounds delicious. Um, so, that's a fair amount of health. For comparison, for scaling's sake. Uh, this is 229 to uh, 233, whereas, like, a turkey leg... Where's all my... yeah, here. Is in the same neighborhood. So we can turn fish, which is not normally healing food, into pretty good healing food. That's a very useful recipe. Uh, fish and chips heals you for a ton. What do you reckon that is? It's going to be fish and... As far as I know, there are no potatoes. So I don't know where the chips are coming from. Maybe... Grain? I'm pretty sure there's no potatoes. Uh, what else do we want to make? We can, of course, make some fruit cobbler. Carrot stew is a stamina restorer. Cheese flan is a is a powerful stamina and energy restorer. I don't anticipate having a lot of trouble on that front, but it might be worth thinking about. Oh, this is cool. We should actually 
We should use spicy tacos. I keep forgetting about them. And that's another recipe that lets you turn fish into something useful. Do we have any chili peppers? I don't think... I don't think I do. Oh, I have one. Yeah, okay, let's make some spicy tacos. A little bit of... A uh, little bit of offense is good. So we use the fish. And... I've already forgotten the recipe. Chili pepper grain meter fish. Right, that makes sense. You gotta make the shell out of something. Uh, so we can boost elemental defense, boost elemental damage. You know, I think it makes a lot of sense to boost elemental damage while eating food that causes elemental damage. Alright, star anise spicy tacos. That sounds horrible. <laughs> what a bad flavor to add to tacos. And then we'll just make some cobbler. Fruit fruit. Cookies. Uh, yeah. Defensive cobbler. Nutmeg fruit cobbler. You know, you throw some apples and some mint and some nutmeg into the cob- yeah, into a pan and there. Delicious cobbler. Why wouldn't you eat that? Who wouldn't eat that, I ask you? Okay. Uh, back to it. We can do- yeah, we can do a little bit more. So we're gonna go through Old Amber Station. We got a single quest and that was good enough for me. Panthox is very cunning. He avoided my uh, my cleverly laid trap there. I gotta remember uh, as well that the Salamander's Breath has a defensive component. There you go. See if he's doing that. Doing that little dance, trying to keep you two squares away from him so you have to walk in to attack him. Just queue up your Salamander's Breath. I don't know why anybody would ever do anything different. Beast Lake Park. That's a new one, right? I don't think we've seen that. Alright, we should probably throw up a healing item because our pet is actually going to die. Nathan Clements, the bandit, just regenerates. That's, uh, I'm afraid, not going to cut it, sir. Good try, though. Alright, we could probably stand to start healing again. Beast Lake Park. Monsters are friendly here. Okay. Fire. Don't immolate anything. Be good. Howdy. This here valley is full of tamed monsters. They're all free-range and peaceful. Say, if you're raising your own monsters in Riverstone, I've got some supplies you might like. Also, there's a particular monster I've been looking to add to my ranch here. Maybe you could help me out. Okay, what are you looking for? A bandit. Yeah, I think the Duke has them all muddled up and confused. But they ain't people like you and me. They're critters, just like any other monster. That means you can knock one out with a monster mallet. What is the biological difference between people and monsters? Sorry, critters. Yeah, alright, I'll hit it. I'll hit what appears to be a man on the head with a mallet for you. Oh, cheap balance. Ooh, heavy mystery eggs. Also, rose petals. Buying the rose petals, buying all of these mystery eggs. Oh, I can't sell stuff to her. Alright, well, let's, let's grab the fountains, because free fountains. Um, did I buy a mallet? I did, okay. Now let's try to find a bandit. We know there should be plenty of bandits around here. The real trick is going to be catching one of them before it burned to death. Alright, so we got to get him. Wow. I should probably turn off feral fighting while I'm trying to set, uh, pacify things. I don't think this counts. It might be worth capturing one of those, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it. But we just have the one mallet. And we have a plan for it already, so. We do hit fairly hard. Like, even without considering our very, very good pet. And 
the next time we see a normal bandit, I'm gonna turn off feral fighting. We're gonna try to take it easy. Okay, fruit bowl is any two fruit. Meat kebab is any two pieces of poultry. That's right, meat kebabs were the ones that heal super... I, I guess that makes sense. They would be made out of items that already heal for a lot. Man, yeah, we are really laying it on. Budokai's a pretty good class. I don't know if I... I don't know if I made my feelings on that clear before. Man, I keep pressing the wrong movement keys. My hand is slightly too high up on the keyboard. Gamer problems. Slightly mispositioned my hand and it caused my numbers to go up at a rate that was lower than the rate that I would have liked them to go up? Okay. Turn off feral fighting. I wish we could tell the pet to just, like, chill out for a second. Oh no, 20% is really bad. The mallet requires him to be under 15, right? Yeah, there's no way he survives a turn. That's a shame. Well, we tried. We'll keep trying. Okay, I don't quite have the JP I need. Aw, oh, man. I saw a bandit, and then I saw the skull, and I was like, aw, that's a shame. Well, oh, wait, there's another bandit. No, he also has a skull. All right, well, let's turn feral fighting back on, because obviously we're not capturing either of these guys alive. Hey, that worked out pretty well. And that salamander's breath does some pretty all right damage. Also, I'll say that we are really... Really burning through flask charges. We're finding a lot of uh, a lot of flask stuff, so it's not a big deal. But that's not necessarily always going to be the case. We got to be a little more careful. Okay, none of that food was really great. Oh, there's a guy. Damn it! And Bloodtooth the Panthox uses. Oh, he's a cheerleader. Now come over here and fight me in this fire. Hey, maybe we should use this chest to make the monsters a little tougher, so that they can uh, survive a couple of our hits. Make some guile. All right, well, I guess we're going up to the next level. We'll uh, we'll try to capture a bandit there. No, okay, here we go. One more try. Okay, he's at fourteen health, fourteen percent. Nope, get away from him. Get away from my beautiful stolen bandit. Okay, it sounds like an actual fire killed the enemy. Look, I did it. Yes, make sure he gets lots of love and care on account of he's definitely a person. Oh, okay, that's actually very handy. Yes, I would like this secret technique. Alright, now we just need 20% or lower health. Can we improve that even more? No, but we did make some money so we can buy the other mystery egg. Alright, so now when we get into situations of, of serious danger, we can summon some really powerful, hopefully really powerful, uh, temporary pets. Let's kind of go back to that menagerie style for a little while. Alright, I think this is a pretty good set of four passives. I'll be honest with you, uh, I've been less impressed with foraging uh, than I was hoping to be. So if we picked up another passive that was, like, really good, I suppose we could, uh... Hey, that's a gold frog that can speak. Sorry, not really. Please, let me be. It is peaceful here. Oh, what are you doing here? Many cycles have I yearned to escape the labyrinth of a forgotten item dream. I stumbled through a portal and found myself in Tangledeep. That's incredible, as is the fact that we are even having this conversation. Fortune smiled upon me that day. Now, I am a ronin, a wanderer much like yourself. How did you learn that word? Ah, uh, cool. Can I have some gold? Curse this gilded body of mine. It has been naught but trouble. No longer will it restrain me. Whoa, calm down now, buddy. Ah. Uh... That was weird, huh? 
What a strange thing to have happened. Well, I guess let's make some meat that we will not forget to use before dying. I'll say this, we have really, really powerful consumables this run. Uh, unfortunately, I think this is where we're going to have to cut it, but we've been tearing through the low levels of this dungeon. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I wish the music hadn't died uh, when we camped. This is kind of awkward. Uh, come back next time. I expect that our pet is going to be able to just kind of carry us on his burning shoulders for a couple more floors, but eventually the challenge is going to turn up, and it'll be really interesting to see if our build can handle it. And we'll see you then.